Uh, yeah, so you played for Hoiberg your first year, and then Hoiberg uh, gets fired uh, 24 games in the season. Jim Boylan takes over. Um, and this is a period of time in Chicago Bulls basketball that I've genuinely always been curi- curious about. Uh, Casey, I think it was Casey Johnson. But I know it was, a, it was a Bulls beat writer reported that there was a, almost a full-blown mutiny that the players were going to stage a boycott because of, uh, uh, would describe it as working conditions <laughs> in the same way that uh, a normal person in a normal job just walks out of their office. Um, and then Jim Boylan formed a leadership council. Um, what, exact, what exactly happened uh, with that practice? Oh, with that practice? Yeah. Uh, I remember we experienced the highs and lows of NBA basketball. We had a back-to-back. We won the first game. Uh, the game winner, and then we lose by a franchise record. I think we lost to Boston by like 56 at home on the second night of a back-to-back. And then the starters got pulled out of the game because we were re- getting ready to practice tomorrow. And then, I mean, we had the adjustment period with the practices with the kind of being harder, getting taped all the time. And then we knew that it's going to be a hard practice after a back-to-back and uh then there's started talks that we're not going and then it ended up being a situation that we were standing in the parking lot when the practice was supposed to start and we're like what are we doing and now we just now we just got to stick together and then we went in to facility put our practice gear on and had a team meeting and everything kind of started to sort out after that but it was this is my second year in league so I'm just coming back. I was hurt my like first three months of my second year. I just came back with an injury and still trying to figure out. And that that's kind of a part like uh, NBA. <laughs> this this is this what it is? And uh, so it's it's a weird time that to look back. I like the the sort of the visualization of you guys standing out in the parking lot, uh, un unable to come to a. a, a a unanimous decision on what you're supposed to do and then all having the realization that you're all fucked because you're you're late for practice yeah. <laughs> and you're like all right uh, the only we thing all... we can do is just stick together now <laughs> yeah exactly Good. exactly um by the way the the <clears throat> an old head like me would say you guys you know your generation of players so soft because you're unwilling to practice after back to back actually i didn't even know it was legal to practice after back to back i thought that was like universal across the league. So that, that's associations. how it started. That's how yes. it started. Like we're not allowed to practice. And then guys started, our reps started to call the union. Like, no, you guys are allowed to practice. It's just kind of a, <laughs> you normally don't practice, but you're allowed to practice. And that that's what, what we were talking about in the parking lot. Like, Oh, that it is not a rule. Like we, we can still practice. And now we're just in it together. So <laughs> did you feel, Going to the Bulls, who didn't have a ton of success uh, after Jordan up until when Tibbs got there, and then there was sort of a transition period. Did you feel, going to that franchise, did you feel pressure and being a high draft pick? Yeah, just being the high draft pick, I think that was a... I wasn't really worried about that. Uh, I didn't even know what to expect, but, but just you could tell when I got to Chicago that even though we, it hasn't been a championship in a while, but that's the expectations of the city. That's what I felt like that even though we're kind of going, guys are getting traded and we got a young team and we walk, still feel like we're, when we walk into the facility, people expect us to be great. So I think that that's what I felt right away. Did you, did you feel, uh, and I think you've talked about this a little bit publicly, but did you feel like your role, your just on the court role change? And that probably led to, you know, some of the, some of the struggles you had in years two and three, just in terms of like your touches. Yeah, I think that that was part of it. I, I thought of it at least. And I'm the guy who always just tries to figure it out. And, um, uh, no matter what role you're playing and you just got to figure it out. And then I was starting to put with less touches, I was shooting less in my third year. And then I felt like, well, I'm getting less shots. So I 
better make these count. I put more pressure on myself and it's just kept missing and missing. And then at some point it just clicked it. I don't, I don't care if I miss anymore. And that, that's when kind of things got better for me. Like, like, I don't care if it, I'm just going to shoot this and it's going to go in eventually. So that, that kind of took me like two months of just struggling in the beginning of my third year. As always, thank you for listening to the show. Please subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Wondery, wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, we appreciate you guys. 